Hello there, my fishy friends. My name is Peter, and today I'm going to talk about the differences in behavior between sockeye salmon and Chinook salmon. I think it's important to know these differences in order to avoid foul hooking too many sockeye salmon. So this was taken near Lickman Road. This spot is not there anymore, but my camera was just underneath that seam. And if you follow my channel, you already know I do a lot of snorkeling in the river. But uh, I don't really get very good salmon footage when I'm snorkeling around because the salmon don't like me. They think I'm a sea lion trying to eat them. So they tend to move over to the other side of the river when I'm in there. I've been sometimes yelled at or accused of chasing the fish right out of the spot. People get upset with me for ruining their fishing day. Well, I've left this completely unedited and you see about 30 seconds after I've placed that camera on the bottom, the salmon are already coming back. So um, I hope I've dispelled some of that criticism. Think what you will, but I actually take great care to disturb the anglers on the river as little as possible with my snorkeling. I avoid the busy times on the river, and if there is a section of the river with lots of anglers, I tend to just swim right through as quickly as I can instead of staying around and playing. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I don't get yelled at very often. It's, it's very rare individuals that take offense to me being there. Let's get into the salmon stuff. So in the top of this picture, you see a school of sockeye salmon. If you're new to salmon fishing, you can tell they're sockeye by their sleek shape. This is a little Rocky Mountain whitefish coming through the picture. So on top are the sockeye and cruising around through the bottom of the picture are the Chinooks. So the Chinooks are a little bit more blunt, a little bit more torpedo shaped and the sockeye are kind of a little bit more silvery, uh, not distinctly so, but uh, they're also a, a lot more sleek. All these fish are kind of in the 8 to 10 pound range or so. So they're not huge, they're not as big as the fall chinooks. The main point I wanted to make with this video is that the sockeye tend to school up rather tight and they pick a spot where they're going to have to do very little work and they stay there. So these fish rest during the day and they move up the river during the night. Same thing with the Chinook salmon. So when you're fishing and you happen to hook into a sockeye, which these sockeye will absolutely bite at stuff. Um, and you know, if you hook into one sockeye, that's fine. If you hook into two or three, you know that you've found a spot where they're all schooling up and resting. And really that should be your cue that you should avoid that spot. Really all it takes is casting maybe like two feet further or having your presentation a little bit shallower or a little bit deeper. I think it really is your responsibility to change up what you're doing and avoid targeting these sockeye. That's because sockeye are really quite fragile and they don't handle catch and release very well. And also when you're fishing through that spot where the sockeye are sitting, you're going to end up with some foul hooked fish. And that's not a good thing either. Matt Sharp from Pacific Angler likes to say this over and over. If you're foul hooking a lot of fish as an angler, it is your responsibility to change it up. You need to change your spot, change your technique. You know, make sure that you're not foul hooking fish over and over. Because if you foul hook two or three fish in a row, and you keep doing the exact same thing, well, at that point, it's pretty easy to argue that you're following these fish intentionally. And I watched a gentleman in this exact spot the night before, and he was drifting through this school of sockeye, and almost every drift, he his, you know, the line would get caught up on these fish. He would see his bobber do a little bit of a twitch, and he'd set his hook. He ended up with six foul hooked sockeye in a row and he thought he was doing great he thought he was being an awesome angler well i'm sorry unfortunately that is not the case 
I didn't yell at him because really it's not my job to yell at people across the river, but I sure felt like it. Anyway, I think that's enough about that. Um, you know, the, the main point I wanted to illustrate is that the sockeye stay put and the Chinooks move around. And you can see them in the bottom of the picture. The Chinooks are cruising out into the fast water and back into the quiet water and out again and back. They're very restless sort of fish. They come into the river with tons of body fat, lots of energy. Uh, they are an introduced stock from the Prince George area. So genetically, they are designed to swim up the Fraser Canyon for a thousand kilometers to spawn. When they hit the vetter, they really have this kind of excess of energy. And um, yeah, it's uh, really a, a fun fishery. And I hope you enjoy it. It's a small run of fish. We only get about 2,000 of them every year they come back. This year, it seems to be like we're having a really strong run. I see lots of people being successful. So by all means, get out there and give them a try. This uh, next little segment is a bit later in the season. It was taken at the end of August, just up above the fishing boundary. And I guess what I really wanted to illustrate with this little segment is that by the time these fish have run the gauntlet of better river anglers, they are quite beat up. Yeah, you know, if you take a careful look, you see all kinds of fish with flaps of white meat poking through their skin and torn fins, and that is all fishing damage. Now. I foul hook fish occasionally too, but it's maybe something like 1 in 10, 1 in 15 salmon that I get on my line are foul hooked. The rest of them I have enticed to bite properly. So as Matt Sharp likes to say, if you're foul hooking a lot of fish, change up something. Like in this case, if you're lucky enough to be targeting a school of fish like this, you really shouldn't be fishing right through them. You should be having a presentation just above where these fish are sitting so that you're not following a great deal of them. Anyway, enough said. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment and thanks for watching. See you next time.